This is gonna be one of the most informative videos that I can produce because we're gonna be talking about the top 25 effects here inside of After Effects. And these are effects that I use constantly. In this video, I'm gonna show you the uses of these effects, how I use them uniquely, and you know, think about ways how you can implement these effects into your work inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on, internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hope you're doing excellent today. And before we jump in this video, be sure to smash that like button because it helps out this channel so much. So just hitting that like button, you know, 25 times if you can would be awesome. So let's jump in. Let's talk about these top 25 effects in no particular order and let's get started. All right, our first effect is gonna be shift channels underneath the channel category. And what I like using this for is creating an RGB split. So what you do is you come here to green, you set the full off, you can turn off the blue. And you duplicate your layer and you can turn off the red and turn the green on. And we'll duplicate one more time, turn off the green and turn the blue on. And then you take your two top layers and you set them to screen. And what you can do is you can hit P on your keyboard for position, all click the stopwatch and type in the wiggle expression. And this is gonna create an RGB split glitch effect on your work. The next effect I like to use is a brightness and contrast effect underneath the color correction menu, the only color correction effect that we'll be using. But I don't like to use this for color correction. I like using this effect for a flicker. So we'll come here and all click the stopwatch for brightness and we'll type in you know, wiggle open parenthesis one comma 100 and it will bring that brightness all the way up to 100. And once all said and done, you can have a really cool flicker effect on any piece of your work inside of After Effects. So another effect that I love using is underneath Stylize called Motion Tile. And what I use this effect for is to repeat the work in our composition. So for example, I can add a keyframe for Tile Center here and increase the output width up to say 300. I'll move forward in our you know timeline and by animating the X or Y values here, I can now extend our composition and animate our scene by using motion tile. The next effect I have here is something I've been using for a very long time. Anytime I'm working with grainy footage inside of After Effects, there's a great effect here called uh, noise and grain and it's called remove grain. And you can set your viewing mode to final output and this is gonna help clean up the noise in your image. And you can easily fine tune this by the noise reduction values. Even though you won't be able to see this effect performing that well through a YouTube video, you'll be able to see it in your own work if you apply this effect to help clean up your footage. So the next effect I like using is the stroke effect. And how it works, you right click a title layer, for example, and you go to create and you click on create mask from tax. And we'll come here to effect generate and we'll grab stroke. And this is the effect. And we can check on all mask, set the brush hardness to 100%, set the end percent down to zero, and animate the start from 0% to 100%, and then change the paint style to on transparent. And now we have a stroke effect for our title right here in After Effects. One of my favorite effects I use quite often is the glow effect, and I use this in a way that I have to duplicate it. So the basic glow effect by itself is not really enough, but I don't like to touch the settings in the first glow effect. So what I'll do with the glow effect is duplicate it to where we have two, and I will set the glow radius up to like 150-ish, somewhere around the high range there. And you're gonna get a really nice soft glow here to your work. And maybe sometimes I'll even duplicate it some more uh, and just stretch it out even further. But that just depends on what I'm doing. Uh, but by stacking glow effect, you can create a really cool look. So one effect that I use in every single piece of work, no matter what I'm doing, is the noise effect. You'll see this in my tutorials all the time. I apply the noise effect and I set it up to about 16% on uncheck use color noise. And it adds a nice subtle, you know, grain or should I say noise to your work. Uh, and it doesn't look clean and kind of breaks it up and just, you know, makes it a little bit more gritty. I love it. All right, the next effect is the echo effect under time echo. And this effect is great when you apply it to objects that have, you know, some form of animation to it. So how this works is you can come here to the number of echoes, and increase that up to a, you know, a good amount like 23, and it duplicates your work that has animation to it. You come here to decay and you bring that down by a little bit and that will soften out the back end of your work. So now I'll create these really cool duplicates inside of your animations. Now one effect I love using, especially when putting together you know groups of work that are very similar together, we have three slides here, is the invert effect. So I'll come here to effect, channel, and I'm gonna grab invert. So what this will do is split this project apart uh, and add a really cool you know, contrastic slide to this within just a click of a button. And a really cool effect I've been using recently is called posterize time. It's under effect, time, and posterize time right there. And this allows you to control the jumpiness of a clip. So for example, we come here, set the frame rate down to 12. Instead of this being now smooth, it's gonna be somewhat jumpy. And it's gonna look great for a specific type of projects that you're working on. So you can use the effect on a specific element or on the overall body of work. And before we move further into this list, I wanna give a huge shout out to our After Effects extension, which has over 3,000 templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. 
So this is our extension that holds all the templates that we have and you can preview a template before you apply it. So this is specifically our Motion Graphics Professionals pack. We currently have 10 packs available on our website, but how these packs extension work is aimed to help you save time and produce awesome work. So you can preview a template before you apply it and when you find the right template, you click on apply and it applies a full animated template to say your After Effects project. You can go into the template and quickly change out your title and with a few clicks of a button, you can change the color of your templates very easily with our controls and back in your main composition, everything will update. And with these packs, you have a handful of categories that you can use. So we can come here and maybe add some accent graphics here. So we have this category here called motion graphic shapes. Click on apply. And literally with just a few clicks and under minutes worth of time, we're able to put together a really cool composition with just two templates right here from one of our packs. And by picking multiple of our packs, you can quickly switch over to other packs that we have available. Uh, some are very small and others are large depending on, you know, what you need a pack for. So if you're looking to save time and produce awesome work for your After Effects and Premiere Pro projects, you can take a look at any of the packs we have off our website. I will link them in the description below. If you do pick up anything, you will be supporting our YouTube channel. So thank you very much. A great effect for backgrounds is under the generate called radio waves. This effect is great if you want to create a really unique background and it's really easy to use this. For example, we'll come here to wave motion and we'll set our expansion up to 2 and we'll increase the lifespan up to 40 so it'll fill up the entire comp. And now we have a really cool animated background that you can play with the other settings in here to create something really custom and unique. So another effect I've been loving to use is under generate four color gradient. And the alternative to this is the gradient ramp, but I like the four color gradient because I can really control and dial in the specific colors for what I'm looking to use. So now I can dial in a multicolor look very easily and you can easily control the color of your image by playing with the anchor points here and it will kind of variate the colors a little bit and not make it so, you know, clean. And also next up, one of the effects I love using is underneath the blur menu, either camera lens blur or Gaussian blur. It just depends what I'm doing, but for this, I'll use a Gaussian blur and just by setting this up to 20 on an adjustment layer and by creating a mask here from the center of our composition, what we'll do is be able to focus in on the center of our comp. We set this to subtract and hit F on keyboard for mass feather. We're able to create a very soft out of focus look around the edges of our composition and really focus in on the center. So as you know, I love stacking the glow effect, but I also love stacking the perspective drop shadow effect. And what I do with this sometimes is I'll just apply the drop shadow effect by itself. Maybe I'll increase the softness by a little bit and then I'll duplicate it and increase the opacity and then increase the softness by a lot more. And that's going to make text and other things, you know, that are not really blending so well together, just stand out so much. So now instead of having, you know, these two objects here kind of blend in together, that drop shadow really makes things pop. So that's why I love using stack drop shadow effects. All right, this next effect, I'm considering a two for one because they're essentially the same exact things called CC snowfall and CC rainfall. And just by simply applying these effects, you can add quick snow particles, which I like using uh, some certain pieces of work or you can quickly add rain which is add a little bit more detail to your comps just use them interchangeably for whatever works best for what you're doing so the next effect that we have is bevel alpha and this is great for making objects pop in your background or really anywhere in the composition so for example we'll come here to effect perspective and we'll grab bevel alpha you can increase the edge thickness if you want and increase the light intensity and that's going to make a sharp edge around whatever object you apply this to you can duplicate it you can bring down the light intensity to 0.3 and then change it to another direction and that's going to create a slight you know light around your object as well and then if you go to your main composition you know it can make a huge difference in your work and make work pop so these next two effects i'm going to use them working together but there's just so many different ways to use them especially for this effect called fractal noise so you go to effect noise and grain and you'll add fractal noise and i'm going to use this to create a really cool glitch effect but there's so many different uses for this for fog for particles uh, and just for using as a map. So we'll come here, I'll change this to max and we'll set this to block and increase the contrast, bring down the brightness, come here to transform, uncheck uniform scaling, increase the scale width, and you can animate the offset turbulence to be like a, you know, a wiggle, open frequency two comma 100. And what you'll do is you'll pre-compose this layer and you can bring that composition into your main comp and turn it off. And you'll create an adjustment layer. And then you go to effect distort and this will be our next effect displacement map you can set your displacement map layer to that map that glitch composition that you just created and it'll automatically create glitches within your work very quickly you can easily control that with the max and vertical displacements of how intense you want those glitches to be all right another effect i love using that i use quite often is with an adjustment layer and go to effect 
the store and we're gonna grab CC lens and you can increase the size here and this is going to distort the edges of your composition it looks really unique of course you can also use the alternative which is to store optics compensation i'm grouping these two together so increase the field of view and check on reverse lens distortion and you're going to get that same look but it looks a little bit different and the, both these effects have their own uses for them but i'm gonna group these two effects together because you can use them interchangeably an effect that I'm using a lot more recently, and I guess this is going to be a practical example, but under perspective, you have CC Sphere, which allows you to obviously create a sphere of a certain object. So you can create a planet uh, with this effect, but of course, I've been using it for more background type stuff. You can also use it for text effects, but CC Sphere is an effect I've been using a lot more, and you know, I've just been liking it. Another effect that I've started liking a lot this year is under simulation is called CC Star Burst. And this is great for creating, you know, particles in your scene uh, or creating very static, you know, type particles in the background. So how this works, you can set down the speed to zero or keep it at a very low number. You can set your grid space in the two and come here to size and bring this down to like 40. And in this case, you know, it's going to create some very far stars for this scene. But you can use this for a particle field if you increase the field, uh, if you increase the speed by a little bit, um, and it creates a really unique look in your scene. Another effect that I've been really enjoying this year is under Effect Generate Grid, and I've been using this to create really cool stylized scenes. So here you can take the grid, turn it into a 3D layer for a solid, and just kind of overlay it into 3D space in your scene. Uh, just and you don't really have to touch much of the settings here to make that look good. Uh, we've also as you see, you've been able to use the grid effect to create floors um, and other abstract objects inside your scene, just to add some more detail to your scene. So one effect that always has to be in a list like this is CC Particle World under Simulation CC Particle World. There's just so many different uses for this, so I'm not going to show a specific example for this. Uh, but in this case, you can create balanced particles or being able to fill up your scene with particles and have all the physics control and particle control that you need. You know, you can replicate so many different icons with this. There's just so many uses that you're going to have to dive in the CC Particle World effect and actually know it if you really want to take After Effects to its full potential. A really great effect that you can use if you want to mess up your work uh, and create something unique is under effect distort and it's called turbulent displace. Primarily this effect is going to be in the amount and the size depending on what you want to do. And what you can do is just animate the evolution to create your distortion here. So instead of having something that would have been clean you have something a little bit more on the abstract side. And lastly the last effect that I use heavily when working with cinematic titles is going to fall under the generate and it's going to be called CC light sweep. And what this does is creates a nice beam of light that you can overlay on top of titles and make them stand out. So all you have to do is add a keyframe for center, move forward in time, and just move this uh, light sweep across your title. And it's going to create a very unique, you know, light effect on your title and it just makes it look, you know, cinematic, nice. I don't know. I just like using it. So that is my top 25 favorite effects right here inside of After Effects. Let me know in the comments below, you know, what are some of your favorite effects, whether you would use some of these effects in this list or not. But let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film, because we're posting multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on this channel. You can also hit me up on Instagram. We're posting tutorials on there every single week as well. And always, be creative.